getting up a victory. Yeah. That one right there. The last car? Okay, perfect. Okay, I got it. I hear you on microwave and booth, I got you on microwave as well. Mike level four news chopper four alpha over North Hollywood. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Great. He's turning around, gonna begin. Getting back on the freeway. It w I think it was a reboot issue because I guess we're holding now, so we should be fine now. Uh, yeah, approaching the Universal City area on the uh, southbound 170. This is a police pursuit that started in the Foothill Division of the LAPD just about 10 to 15 minutes ago. And you can see that the vehicle is an older model car and it appears to be smoking there a little bit from everything that the driver has put it, put it through over the past 10 minutes. This is believed to be a, a what's uh, described on the scanner as an armed and dangerous suspect, but we believe that there are at least three people in the vehicle. The LAPD was in what's called surveillance mode, which is when the, only the helicopter is overhead. But because of airspace restrictions with Burbank Airport, the airship actually lost the vehicle. And with no units directly behind the car, at this point, they're trying to find the vehicle yet again. But currently here, uh, climbing onto the 170 freeway. He's been getting off and on off the 170 freeway. Continuing here, I believe, uh, going to be uh, 170 southbound, but I'll confirm it here in just a moment. Again, three suspects in the car. Yeah, when I last heard uh, before I started speaking, uh, I am hearing again on the scanner that the uh, units have lost the vehicle, so they don't have it at this point. Uh, Air 16, which is the airship, they're still trying to locate it here, but we of course have eyes on it. I'm sure that my pilot is in communication with the airship as we speak, as the driver continues here on the uh, 170 freeway. Again, believed to be three suspects in the car, armed and dangerous, and believed to have been armed at one point. However, it sounds like they may have thrown those weapons out of the window at one point during this pursuit. So at this point, we don't believe that they're still armed, but of course that was the original walk armed and dangerous suspects out of the LAPD's Foothill Division. Yeah, we believe that two of the suspects got out of the car uh, as we were coming overhead. And I just lost him here in the mix here, but I think that's him right there. So two of the suspects, uh, we had to reboot our camera system. And during that time, two of the suspects jumped out of the car. So we weren't able to capture those images for you. But we did witness two people get out of the vehicle of what is believed to have been three. So at this point, we believe that perhaps it is just that single driver, a male, who continues uh, to lead the LAPD here on this pursuit. Although the CHP could take over at any point because the pursuit is now on the freeway. It is still the LAPD that is in pursuit.
The last thing I heard on the scanner was that the unit still did not have eyes on him, but I believe the airship has found him yet again because of the way that this person is driving. It's actually pretty easy to find him on the freeway. He keeps on crossing over onto the carpool lane, high speeds whenever he can, even though he is facing a little bit of traffic. And although he was on the southbound 170, he keeps on getting off the 170 and is now back northbound on the 170 freeway, coming up to Roscoe Boulevard. So essentially going back towards the direction where this pursuit began. It originally began in the LAPD's Foothill Division, which is basically the areas of Arlita and Pacoima, and got onto the 170 freeway, making its way southbound, where he exited at Victory Boulevard and was kind of off and on the freeway until getting back on northbound and now continuing northbound here, approaching Sheldon. He's, he's exiting. Yeah, it looks like you may be exiting here on uh, Sheldon, which is right where the, uh, basically the 5 and the 170 come together. He had the option of continuing northbound and getting on that 5, but it looks like he's going to exit early and exit here onto Sheldon, back onto surface streets in the Pacoima area, which again is where this pursuit began. We we first heard about it on uh, Laurel Canyon. It was Laurel Canyon and Osborne, roughly, where the pursuit began. He got onto the, uh, uh, he was on surface streets for a while before jumping on the freeway and is now back uh, almost just under us here uh, on uh, Laurel Canyon with a, a cross of the five freeway. Oh, oh, wrong way here, wrong way here. It makes it much more dangerous when the pursuit makes it onto surface streets because you do have the pedestrians to contend with. At, well, at least when he was on the freeway, we know that in all likelihood there wouldn't be any pedestrians there. But now really picking up speed here on surface streets. He's on Laurel Canyon northbound coming up to Wentworth. Yeah, all over the road here on uh, Laurel Canyon, uh, coming up to Muscantine. So he's going to have a red. Let's see what he does. Looks like he's going to try to just make a right-hand turn onto Brantford from Laurel Canyon, slowing down speeds just a touch, but only because of a little bit of traffic ahead of him. So he just turned on to Brantford. Yeah, Brantford from Laurel Canyon. Uh, other cross coming up is going to be hat on. He's going to be right under us. Uh, so I'm going to have to move the camera here for just a second so that we don't lose him. So he's going to come out uh, your side, Sorrow, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock now. Continuing here, though, on Brantford with a cross of Telfair. Uh, using that center lane there to get by. Looks like he's going to be turning, though, here onto, uh, onto uh, Telfair. This may be it. Yeah, this may be it, and uh, we're going to keep uh, close tabs here on the driver. I see him there opening his door, closing it back up, and continuing from uh, where he had stopped. It was difficult for me to tell because of the tree if he threw any anything out, but I can tell you that earlier during this pursuit, the suspects did throw objects out of the vehicle, which the LAPD then tried to retrieve. I believe that one of those objects may have been a weapon uh, because we did hear at one point that these were armed and dangerous suspects. Three gang members was the way that the LAPD described them over the police scanner. And now coming up to Osborne Street, which is the major here through the area. And you can see the car is a, appears to be smoking a little bit. May, uh, may be something wrong with it.
initially the work ground units behind the vehicle. In fact, it was an unmarked unit that was leading the pursuit till they got units with a light bar behind it. And because the driver was driving so erratically, that's why they went into surveillance mode with only the helicopter only. And that's when, uh, uh, when units tried to re-engage, they uh, unfortunately lost it at that point. So at this point, it appears to be no units behind it, just the LAPD airship overhead as the vehicle comes up to a Golita here on Hat On. We are in Pacoima, so we're definitely in uh, in Pacoima. Just the major would be Osborne, so the, off of Osborne, but in smaller streets here, uh, Haddon and uh, Garber Street. So just on the east side of the 5 freeway, not too far from Whiteman Airport. Whiteman Airport is just to the east of here, and it looks like he's uh, setting up here to make a uh, right-hand turn onto Terrabella, just on the back side of that tree there. Yeah, just on, and it looks like he's going to continue through. Yeah, he could have tricked me on that one. He decided to go straight instead. Uh, Remington with a cross of a uh, hat on is uh, going to be the next street. So he, now he's on Pierce Street with a cross of hat on. Uh, these are all streets that are very busy, especially at this time of day with people coming home from work and, and kids coming home from school. Uh, you can see just how congested some of these streets are with cars parked on either side of the street. As you mentioned, lots of speed bumps to try to lower speeds through the area. And he has lowered his speeds. He's right at our 12 o'clock sorrow on Oneida uh, with a cross of Pierce. He just made that northbound turn. So continuing here northbound on a, a smaller street called Oneida. Ida. He just made a eastbound turn there onto Van Nuys Boulevard. And uh, you're right, this is very close to where this pursuit began. We first heard about it near Osborne and Laurel Canyon, but I think it had already been going on for about a minute or two before that. So he's continuing here on Van Nuys Boulevard, headed eastbound uh, back towards Telfair. And it looks like he's uh, using that center lane there to get by you. You can see just how busy the streets here are in Pacoima at this time of the day. Yeah, pretty much just waiting for that guy to turn or uh, let's see what he does. Yeah, failure to yield is what they'll typically get them on uh, just, to, uh, just to start the pursuit. But I believe that, yeah, it's kind of like a catch-all phrase, but I believe that the... Uh, um, the, uh, the real want is going to be armed and dangerous suspects. We know that the first unit that was behind the vehicle was an unmarked unit. So perhaps uh, there, this had been some sort of surveillance situation where that unit had been following the suspects. And then in their attempt to pull them over, that is when it became a failure to yield and the, and the vehicle didn't stop. Yeah, when he's at these speeds, it seems like everything's fine. So it may have just been because he was going so fast and hitting those brakes hard. But now uh, he's approaching San Fernando Road, which is going to be the major here through the area, which is just on the west side of, of, of our airport here, Whiteman Airport. So he's uh, heading uh, southbound here on San Fernando Road, coming up to Fillmore. It, this, again, a very busy area in Pacoima at this time of the day, but he has slowed down his speed significantly, which is a good sign. Yeah, they're in surveillance mode now. He just turned on a Van Nuys Boulevard. Uh, Foothill Division of the LAPD is very close by, so they could easily put units behind this guy. But they have units in the area to try to slow his roll a little bit by letting him think that he's not being pursued. They're only keeping the airship overhead for now. But if his speeds continue at such slow speeds, they could bring the, those ground units in and start to chase them from the ground as well. But for now, it seems like the surveillance mode is working. Perhaps he'll come to a stop the way he did before. And then at that point, the units can move in and take the suspect into custody. Yeah, Foothill Division is uh, right off of Osborne and San Fernando Road, so not that far, maybe a mile at most from our present location. Yeah, so...
Oh, and it could be because he's looking for a place to stop the car and then run away, or perhaps looking for the home of somebody he knows, perhaps even his own home, to try to run inside and seek shelter there. But for now, it looks like he's for the most part circling the same general area back on Pier Street. We've seen him here before. I remember passing that yellow car once before there on Pier Street and now making a uh, turn here onto Kewin Avenue from Pier Street. Yeah, originally the LAPD said there were three people in the car. We saw two of them uh, run away from the vehicle, but the car continued on. The driver, we can tell, is wearing a white t-shirt, and we're not able to see anybody else besides that person. So at this point, we do believe that the, our original count of three is down to one. However, it is unclear if those other two suspects were taken into custody. The officers, of course, tried to keep keep going with the vehicle uh, so one of the units would have to stop and try to take those additional two suspects into custody at this point we haven't heard if those two people if those two people are in police custody Yeah, during the day, it's difficult to know if, if they can tell or not. At nighttime, it's a lot easier because they would still see the night sun overhead over the vehicle, which is why sometimes during those nighttime pursuits, the airship will even turn its night sun off so that the suspect vehicle won't, the, the, the suspect in the vehicle rather, won't know that he is being pursued. But in, in daylight situations like this, it is really difficult to know whether or not the suspect knows that he's still being followed. Yeah, if we didn't know any better, we wouldn't even think this was a pursuit at this point. He has slowed down his speed significantly significantly here on Amboy Street with a cross of Pierce. So back on Pierce, uh, which we've mentioned now at least three times during the course of this pursuit, no units directly behind the suspect, just the airship overhead. And you can see that he's making yet another turn here onto Rincon Avenue from Pierce. He's uh, right up our nose. Uh, yeah, Chuck, just as you mentioned that, he kind of picked up a little bit of speed. So it's unclear if perhaps he saw the airship overhead, and uh, that's why he started picking up some of his speed. But you can see he went essentially from like 25 miles an hour back up to about 70 to 80 miles an hour. And there was a very close call uh, uh, just about a moment ago in a neighborhood where there was a bicyclist. Came very close to that bicyclist, fortunately didn't hit him. And just after that was when he got on the major here, which is Terabella, and really started to pick up speed yet again. Yeah, he just went under the uh, 5 freeway. Uh, so he's very close to where the 170 and the 5 come together. He's just north of that on a smaller street now called Beachy and with a cross of Gruen Street. So now that, that he's no longer on the major, he has slowed down just a little bit, but still a lot faster than he was going just a moment ago on the surface streets uh, before he got on that major. And continuing here, Beachy through Pierce, continuing northbound and coming up to Van Nuys here in just a moment.
Yeah, all the other windows are down. The windows are tinted, so it's difficult to see inside, except for, uh, of course, that the front window and the driver's side window when we are on that side. We do get a good visual of that driver wearing a bright white T-shirt. Uh, but other than that, we don't really know too much about him, except that he was a... Uh, he was the driver that initiated this pursuit here in Foothill Division uh, now about 20, 25 minutes ago with three suspects in the car. Two of them jumped out. He continued on, and uh, the pursuit for the most part has continued here in the Pacoima and Arlita area. Yeah, I, I think technically the city would be Arlita here. Uh, Pacoima and Arlita do border each other, of course. So, yeah, he's uh, currently in Arlita. When he heads a little east of here, that's when he enters into the Pacoima area. But he's now turning here, Devonshire Street from Arlita. Yeah, he, he definitely could. He has been on the freeway before, so he's not afraid to get on the freeway. But the problem he encountered before when he was on that 170 northbound was that there was a lot of traffic, and he didn't like that. So he jumped off of uh, the 170 freeway at Sheldon, and that is uh, where he's been ever since on surface streets here in the Pacoima and Arlita area as he uh, makes this turn here onto Paxton with a cross of Vena Street. Yeah, going under the freeway here, we'll get him as he comes out the other side. There he is right there. Paxton, of course, runs just on the uh, south side of the 118 freeway. So he's uh, now made his way northbound as far as the 118. Yep, you called it Chuck in and out here on uh, the corner of Paxton and Laurel Canyon, just on the uh, south side of the 118 freeway, east of the five. And there is a marked unit, just saw one unit as he uh, drove by here. So let's see if that unit engages the pursuit. There's another one. I have a feeling these guys are gonna join into the mix. Yep, I hear them now on the scanner. They're saying that they are in pursuit, so they're re-engaging. Let's see if this doesn't cause the driver to really pick up speed like he did before. Uh, according to our speedometer up here in News Chopper 4 Alpha, it says he's going about 80 at the most. So we've seen him go uh, at his highest speeds, anywhere from 70 to 80, which is about how fast he's going right now here on Laurel Canyon with a cross of, yeah. Yeah, I think once he saw those marked units, that's when he started to, uh, to uh, hit the gas. So he's continuing here southbound on Laurel Canyon, coming up to gain. So if he continues in this general direction, he's going to head right over towards Foothill Division. There's going to be even more units there that can join into the mix. But currently, Laurel Canyon and Terrabella. Yeah, it's difficult to see him when he's when he's in the sun for us, even, it's difficult to follow along. So we're trying to do our best here to keep tabs on him. But he's currently headed southbound here on Laurel Canyon, coming up to Osborne, which is where I first heard about this pursuit. He's currently at the uh, intersection there. He has the red, so let's see what he does. He's going to make a right-hand turn onto Osborne, and this will give him a chance to get onto the 5 freeway if he so chooses. So let's see what he does. Yeah, the, yeah, this is a shopping center. It's got a Target, a Ross, a Food for Less. It's a very busy shopping center, uh, we, where, as you can see, there's a lot of pedestrians out and about here just going about their day, doing their regular shopping, a mother there with her kids as this uh, pursuit goes right by them uh, with no ground units directly behind him now. They saw what he did. He really picked up speed as soon as they got behind him, so they decided to pull off just a little bit longer, give him a little bit more time to cool down and hopefully slow down his speeds yet again. Yeah, he got out of that shopping center and made his way uh, 
southbound on Laurel Canyon, now just made a, uh, a left-hand turn onto Branford. So he's going eastbound here on Branford, away from Laurel Canyon, picking up speed yet again. But fortunately, uh, at least this section of Branford isn't as busy. It's a little bit more commercial than it is residential. So it will hopefully take some of the, those pedestrians out of the mix. But for now, continuing here eastbound on Branford. Yeah. Yeah, we had heard something about that early on, and we had also heard that the suspects had thrown things out the window. So at that point, uh, it sounded like some of those objects included weapons. So at this point, we're unclear if, if they threw everything out that they had or if they held on to any of it. But we also heard them mention drugs, that some of the things that they were throwing out the window was drug and drug paraphernalia. So uh, at an early point during this pursuit, the suspects just try to get rid of everything they had. But of course, the officers have to be very careful because they don't know if perhaps there is still a gun inside of the vehicle with this uh, single suspect that's left. Yeah, and those ground units were directly behind the vehicle when uh, that occurred, so they were able to document where they had thrown those things out and send another unit to try to find uh, everything that was tossed out of the window. But now here on Haddon with a cross of Osborne yet again, and you can see the car smoking just a little bit. We've seen it before a couple times, and uh, continuing here on uh, Osborne with a cross of Rincon. Yeah, another little, uh, yeah, a little strip mall there. You can see a lot more smoke now coming from the, from the car. Uh, he's directly under us here, so we may have to turn the camera here for just a, a sec. But here, continuing southbound on uh, Laurel Canyon, coming away from Osborne in that number one lane, slowing down a little bit, but just because there's traffic ahead of him. And again, we believe that it is a male suspect that is left in this vehicle. One of three suspects that started this pursuit in the Foothill Division, which is where we still find ourselves here in the Pacoima area. Yeah, he's been a... He does have some people that are out on, the, out on the street. They've heard about this pursuit in their neighborhood. So we have noticed that there are some people out on the sidewalks. So uh, we have seen him gesture towards one of them before. However, it's unclear if he knows them in any way or it's simply because he, he sees that he has an audience and he's trying to play it up for them. Uh, he, at this point, we can't see him from this vantage point, but I'll try to show him to you again uh, when we get on the other side as he continues here on Laurel Canyon with a cross of Pierce. Yeah, he made a U-turn there on Laurel Canyon, which is a very busy street at this time of the day. Uh, so when he got to about Laurel Canyon and Pierce, there were, I think there was just too much traffic for him to continue northbound on Laurel. So he decided to turn around and head southbound yet again. And here's that uh, look at that driver that I promised you. You can see that he's, he's still wearing, he still has his uh, hands on the wheel, not really gesturing out the window right now, but you can see that the window is down. And uh, he just continues to drive along here on a South Final Laurel Canyon, headed back towards Osborne. And it seems like he has a general idea of where he wants to either abandon the car or run because he keeps circling the same streets here in the Pacoima area, Osborne, Pierce Street, uh, Laurel Canyon, now under the 5 freeway, they're coming out on the other side. 
so this is actually a little bit more uh, west than he has been going. He's been staying on the east, east, eastbound side of the five, south of the 118. Now he's more towards the Arlita area, which he hasn't frequented as much, but he has been over on, on this section of town during the course of this pursuit. Northbound turn. Yeah, and picking up speed here too on on Arlita Avenue uh, at Terrabella. So he, we've seen him here before, uh, just a few minutes ago. But I have a feeling he's even more familiar with the Pacoima area than he is with Arlita, just because most of this pursuit has kept us in Pacoima rather than Arlita. But the two the two areas are really not that far away from each other. Really picking up speed here, using that center lane to get by on Arlita Avenue. They can let it run till this guy runs out of gas. If that's what's gonna be the safest thing for their officers, the LAPD doesn't wanna put them in danger and doesn't wanna put the citizens in danger as well because when this guy is driving at high speeds, it endangers all of us. So if by backing up a little bit and just letting the airship monitor him, if that's gonna make this a safer situation, that's what they're gonna go with. So whatever is safest at this point, I believe they may just ride this out till the guy gives up or runs out of fuel uh, because we've seen what happens when they do get units behind him. He simply s starts to drive a lot more erratically and a lot more dangerously here in the area. Yeah, de de he has a little bit of a pattern now. He's been on Pierce Strip, been on Osborne, been on Terrabella, Laurel Canyon, but it's still not completely predictable enough for them uh, to set up those spike strips because, of course, this is a busy area. Any other vehicle could run over them. So uh, at this point, I haven't heard about the talk of spike strips on the scanner. And, of course, the pit maneuver at this point is just out of the question because he's been driving just too erratically. The streets are just too busy. As you can see, pedestrians here in the crosswalk and making a turn here onto uh, Laurel Canyon from Van Nuys. Yeah, absolutely. He, what we don't want is for him to get desperate, of course, and, and do something that would endanger anyone's life or even his own. So at this point, if he just continues making these circles and, and uh, decides to abandon the car someone and start running, there are units from the LAPD all over the area. They will quickly be able to take him into custody. Uh, of course, he could just run out of gas and give up voluntarily or just pull over and give up voluntarily. So he's got some options. But of course, at this point, uh, he continues to evade authorities here on Laurel Canyon with across of Terrabella, waiting for the red light. Let's see if he waits or uh, decides to pl plow through the red. Yeah, it looks like he just... Yeah, go ahead, check. Yeah. He Absolutely, with how busy the streets are. Yeah, streets are very busy here. You see those pedestrians out on the street. That's that's what makes this so nerve-wracking, just knowing how busy the streets are here in Pacoima with pedestrians and vehicle traffic, and you have someone driving through at you know 50 miles an hour, blowing through red lights. It really makes for a dangerous situation. And we have noticed that now during the course of this pursuit, like right here, you see that there is a, a small crowd that has gathered there to watch the vehicle go by. And he's been past this crowd before. It was the crowd that was on Laurel Canyon and Montague. So that's the second time he's passed by them. Perhaps it was intentional, perhaps not, and he just ran into them again. Uh, but he, uh, he seems to appreciate having an audience.
Yeah, we're still in uh, the Pacoima area on Brantford with across of Telfair Avenue. And this time fully closing the door. Yeah, he's done this before, same exact spot here on Telfair with a cross of uh, De Bell Street. Yeah, he's just gonna wait. And there, yeah, here's a, a woman that he's speaking to, now a small crowd gathering here. So several people that are joining him here on uh, De Bell with a cross of Telfair. He parked the car, sat down on the curb, and it appears that he's simply just waiting for the LAPD to come get him. I hear on the scanner that there's units uh, heading here as we speak. So we should see them pull up here in just a moment. And as I widen out the shot, you will see at least two units here from the LAPD's Foothill Division that are going to try to take this suspect into custody. Yeah, he appears to be complying with officers here, arms wide, legs wide, and they will approach him here in just a moment. They may have him stand up and uh, retreat back towards them, and of course ra lift up his shirt, just to standard protocol to make sure that there's nothing on him that could potentially hurt them. Everyone he was talking to is now under that tree and away from the, uh, the uh, present danger of the situation here. But of course, once the officers take this person into custody, they will still have to clear the vehicle to guarantee that there is nobody else inside. When this pursuit began, we understand there were three people in the car. Two of them uh, ran away from the car at one point during the pursuit, but the, this suspect, the driver, kept going. Yeah, it appears. And it's something we always talk about is that suspects tend to return to an area that is familiar to them. And we witnessed that here today. He, this suspect stopped the car here before, exact same spot, opened the door, but something kept him going. So he decided to jump back in the car and keep going for another 10 to 15 minutes before finally returning to the same exact spot where he finally opened the door, got out of the car, sat down on the curb, and waited for the LAPD to come take him into custody. Yeah, at this point it's unclear because they, they uh, have their guns drawn at him. Perhaps they're just waiting for additional units because they, they will need this team of officers to take the suspect into custody, but then they will need another team of officers to approach the vehicle and clear it. So that appears to be a situation where they're just waiting for additional units, and I see that additional units are actually pulling up as we speak. So they will have to be very careful about it, though, just because we know that there is a possibility that this suspect may have been armed. You see one team moving in right now. That's going to be the team that's going to uh, clear the car, I believe. So sure enough, that team of officers will clear the car. Then the other team of officers will keep tabs on the suspect and then uh, finally take him into custody.
It is very unusual. Under most circumstances, they always take the suspect into custody to get them away from the situation and then clear the car. So it's really interesting that they did it the opposite this time around, cleared the car and then and then took the suspect into custody. We, of course, heard that weapons were perhaps involved. And so for that reason, perhaps that is why they did things a little bit differently. But regardless of how they did them, they everything turned out the best way possible. This one suspect is in custody without really colliding with any anyone during the course of this crazy pursuit. Uh, there were a lot of close calls, but fortunately he's in custody, nobody hurt, and it's still unclear though if those other two suspects are in police custody. happening across Southern California. Subscribe here. Thanks for watching. The chase is on.